Hello, this is Chris Ambuto. I am the Chief Information Security Officer for CMIT Solutions of Boston and Cambridge and Hollywood, Florida. I have been working in information technology, security and compliance for over 25 years. Additionally, I've worked in a variety of companies and a variety of clients, from pharma and biotech to insurance to real estate. I'm also a licensed attorney, but none of my comments in this podcast are legal advice. Today, I want to take you through a variety of cybersecurity topics, their importance to your business, and the solutions that CMIT offers to its clients. First, I'm going to walk us through the business, economic, and financial impacts of cybersecurity issues and data breaches. While there are numerous business costs associated with cybersecurity incidents and breaches, the ones we're going to focus on today include the direct economic and financial costs, such as lost business and lost productivity, the reputational hit that a company may take from a breach, and the various legal and regulatory issues that can stem from a breach. Now let's take a bit of a deeper dive into the economic impact of a cybersecurity breach or attack. Cyber attacks can result in substantial financial loss to a business arising from things like theft of corporate information, including non-public information, trade secrets, and similar things theft of financial information, disruption of transactions, which can be a huge problem for online retailers, loss of business or contracts, and lost time and productivity from outages caused by hackers. Additionally, businesses that suffer a data breach may also incur costs associated with repairing affected systems. For example, restoring compromised systems, forensically analyzing compromised systems to understand if company or personal data was exfiltrated or acquired by hackers, and rebuilding the affected systems and workstations. Now we're going to look at reputational damage. In addition to the direct economic impacts of a data breach or attack, there is also an impact on the company's reputation. Research shows time and time again that customers are less likely to use a retailer or a financial institution or a healthcare provider who is breached, and in some instances up to a third of customers will stop doing business with these organizations. Companies that have experienced a breach often see increased costs associated with acquiring new customers. These impacts all stem from the idea that trust, consumer trust, is an essential element of the customer relationship. And cyber attacks can damage your reputation and therefore erode that trust. Now we're going to take a look at legal and regulatory considerations. There are a wide variety of legal and regulatory issues associated with cybersecurity breaches, but I only have time to cover them very briefly in this slide. In general, your company must protect the personal information it holds pertaining to customers and employees. If this data is accidentally or deliberately compromised and you have failed to deploy appropriate security measures, you may face fines, regulatory sanctions, and civil litigation. Currently, all 50 U.S. states, including Washington, D.C., have enacted or are in the process of enacting data breach protection and notification laws. These laws, while similar to one another, each have their own nuances. In addition to specifying the types of data protected by each law, the laws also specify the reporting requirements detailing who needs to be notified and how and when they need to be notified in the event of a breach. Some other notable security and privacy laws that your company may need to comply with include the New York Department of Financial Services, or NYDFS, Cybersecurity Regulation, HIPAA, or the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, the GDPR, or the, J the General Data Protection Regulation. And in addition to these laws, your company may also face civil lawsuits. Now, these lawsuits can be very costly to defend, and financial damages from settling or from losing a lawsuit can be substantial. Now we're going to move on and look at the threat landscape. First, we're going to talk about the bad guys, who they are, and what they are looking to steal from you and your company. Then we're going to walk through some of the latest types of attacks and focus on phishing as the bad guys try to manipulate you to give them the information that they are looking for. Finally, we're going to talk briefly about how long the bad guys are lurking in your systems before they are detected. Now let's talk about the bad guys. So the vast majority of of bad guys are external actors, or roughly 65%. And these can include nation states, hacktivists, which are groups that have some sort of a social or political agenda behind what they're doing, organized crime, one of your competitors, or a former employee who may have an axe to grind. 
The next group are internal actors, which make up about a third of all bad actors. This can be a very difficult group to address because these individuals already have access inside of your perimeter and may have access to droves of sensitive information. And then finally, there are partners. And this group can include your suppliers and your vendors. Now we're going to talk through some specific types of attacks, um, but specifically we're going to focus on phishing. Phishing is a type of social engineering, and it's a type of social engineering where cyber criminals are trying to persuade the victims into giving them sensitive information. Now it's estimated that roughly 91% of these attack, that, uh, of attacks and breaches begin through phishing. There are various types of phishing as well. Some of these include spear phishing and whale phishing. Spear phishing is a type of phishing that is very, very targeted using emails that are directed at individuals or departments within an organization appearing to come from some sort of a legitimate source, say a colleague or a vendor, for example. Whale phishing is when the attackers target very senior level, excuse me, very senior level people at, at a company in order to try to leverage their senior position to obtain highly sensitive information or to help manipulate their subordinates in the company into doing what the attacker wants. And this leads to a subset of phishing attacks or called business email compromise. In business email compromise, the attacker is trying to persuade the individual uh, or an individual who can authorize a money transfer or wire transfer to transferring money to the attacker's bank account. These type of attacks can be very effective at, unfortunately, at tricking the victims into wiring money and large sums of money in some instances into these fraudulent bank accounts. Now let's move on to talking about something very important. Um, trying to understand if you've been hacked and then how long the attackers may have actually been in your systems. Answering these questions can be incredibly difficult. Sometimes we're first tipped off that an attacker is present through logging and alerting, kind of more almost proactively. Other times though we start to see that a system may be behaving oddly or crashing frequently and sometimes we learn from our users. They may notice things like that they're not receive that they are receiving replies to emails that they never actually sent, or they notice that they're not receiving email at all, or they're getting locked out of certain accounts. Next, we want to talk about a thing we call dwell time, and dwell time is essentially um, a measure of time for how long the attackers have been in your systems before they are detected. Now, there's varying reports on how long it takes to detect an attacker that has compromised your system or account, but rough estimates are around 90 days on average from when the attacker first compromises a system until they are detected. During that time, the attackers may have been capturing information about your company or user information such as usernames and lists of employees, or they may have been moving to other machines, what we call pivoting in order to ensure that they can maintain their presence in your company or network. In any event, the hackers generally have ample time inside your network to go about their business. Okay, so now that we've just talked about all the scary things out on the internet, let's talk about some of the offerings that CMIT provides to its customers to help protect them from the issues that we've just talked about. CMIT offers a broad portfolio of services and consulting for its clients. Now I'm going to walk you through a short list of these services. We categorize the services that CMIT provides into two big categories, technology and process. So first we're going to talk about the technology services that we provide. Now as more and more customers and companies move to the cloud, it is critical to secure the cloud environment as much as possible. To that end, CMIT extensively reviews your existing cloud security environment and implements a variety of security best practices. Next, I want to talk about multi-factor authentication or MFA. MFA is a method for securely logging into your company's resources. CMIT will work with you and your company to implement the correct MFA solution for your infrastructure and applications. Next, I want to talk about administrator and user access and controls. CMIT adheres to the principles of least privilege and implements solutions which provide the right access to the right users without granting unnecessary privileges. And then finally, 
firewall rule review and remediation. CMIT will perform an in-depth review of your company's firewall rules and provide recommended changes to secure your company. This review and update is critical to preventing hackers from penetrating your company's outer defenses and maintaining the security of your data. Now let's move on to the process products that CMIT provides. So in addition to technology, CMIT provides a lot of process services as well. First off, I want to talk about policy and process. CMIT creates and updates policies and processes for your company. Having up-to-date policies for onboarding and offboarding users, acceptable use, social media, and the like is critical to ensuring that your company's data is accessed by the right people and that access is turned off and no longer needed. Cybersecurity education is one of my favorite topics. Your employees are the first and last line of defense against hackers and security incidents. CMIT provides interactive cybersecurity training for your employees, which is tailored to your company and its needs. Change management. Change-related incidents are very common, and a good change management process can help to reduce the impact of changes in your environment. The goal of change management is to ensure that standardized methods and, proce and processes are used for efficient and prompt handling of changes in order to Im in order to minimize the impact of change related incidents upon your company. And then finally, security assessments and evaluations. A security assessment includes reviewing your environment in a holistic manner to understand your company's security strengths and weaknesses and develop a plan to address such strengths and weaknesses using a risk-based approach. Finally, let's talk about some of the additional and advanced services that CMIT provides. These include vulnerability scanning and penetration testing. Vulnerability scanning looks to scan internal and or external network devices for known vulnerabilities. CMIT will then create a detailed report of these vulnerabilities and the ways to mitigate them. Penetration testing attempts to exploit internal and or external vulnerabilities. The, this process looks to understand which potential vulnerabilities are exploitable and through this process, management can better understand the actual business risks associated with your IT infrastructure and address these risks. Now I want to thank you for your time today. We've shown you only a brief listing of the entire CMIT product portfolio. If you need help or advice on any of these areas, CMIT has products and services at very affordable cost that can support your firm. Thank you again.